Please welcome the phenomenal Michael Rosen. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Hello. Wow. This is nice. This is very nice. It's a, it's, we're all full up, aren't we? It's, it's very nice, just in case we're a bit cold. <laughs> Actually, think about that. If, if you are a bit cold, I've got a cold poem. Okay, so we've got to imagine it's a cold day. We'll get there in a minute, but can you first of all put your thumb in the air? I can see there's some quite small ones here. So we'll start here. We'll put your thumb in the air. Lovely. Put your finger over there. That's lovely. See if you can find your other thumb. You may find it on the end of your other arm. <laughs> lovely. And then we're going to find that thumb and put that on the end of your finger. There'll be some mums and dads who find this quite tricky. OK, they nearly always go thumb to thumb, even though I said thumb to finger. Easy mistake to make. Finger to thumb. Ah, so now you've got a telly. OK, so you can put your ear on the telly. That's lovely. That program's called What's This Here? <laughs> lovely. You could put your cheek on the telly. And that program's called Don't Be Cheeky. <laughs> then you could put your nose on the telly. And that program's called... Yeah, or, or it could be that other program that comes on a little bit later, uh, The Ten O'Clock Nose. <laughs> so I tell you what, let's put all that together. We'll make that into a little rhythm thing and we'll go... What's this here? Don't be cheeky, don't be nosy, 10 o'clock nose. Do you think you could do that? <laughs> yes, of course you could. I'll count you in. One, two, oh, don't forget the fingers as well. You remember that bit? Dad down the front is actually going like that. <laughs> Shall I go now? You know, thumb, finger, thumb, finger, finger. I feel like Dara O'Brien here, you know. It's here, right? we got it. He's there, he's there. What's your name, sir? Mark. Yeah, Mark. Come on in, Mark. On your marks. Yeah, yeah. All right. That's pathetic. <laughs> pathetic. You've, so many times. There was that comedian called Mark My Words. I rather liked him. Here we go. Distraction, distraction. Here we go. So we say, what's this here, don't we? We start there. Then we say, don't be cheeky. Then we say, don't be nosy. And then we say, nine o'clock nose. Let's go for it. Come on. Let's see whether we can do it. Let's do it. One, two, three. What's this here? Don't be cheeky. Don't be nosy. And now do it without me. One, two, three. What's this here? Don't be cheeky. Don't be nosy. Yes, you clap yourselves. Even Mark did it. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> so that was good. Actually, some of you may find this quite interesting as well. If you take that hand there and put your other hand over the top of it and mingle your fingers, OK, and then if you pull your hand through... Sorry, I've got a bit of arthritis. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yep. And then you put your two fingers up by the side of your nose... And if you, sorry, you don't have to talk in this silly voice, it's just I like doing it. Okay, you put your fingers up by the side of your nose, and in a moment, you're going to take your hands, you're going to open your hands without taking your fingers off your face. I'll demonstrate. Here we go. Like that. See, I didn't do it at all. So then turn to the person next to you and do that without taking your hands off your face. Yes, Mark, yes, it's all there. Here we go one more time, here we go. And pull that hand through, fingers up by the side of your face, and open your hands without taking your fingers off your face. Woo, lovely, well done. I love the people cheating. Yeah, look at me, I'm doing it. Lovely. I like that. Very good. So here's that poem for a cold day all about your hand. And all you have to do is say and do it after me. So I say, this is the hand that touched the frost, that froze my tongue. Ow! 
and made it go numb. And if some of you little ones not sure what numb means, it means it's when so cold you can't feel it. You know when sometimes you have an ice cube in a drink and you go like this, you go... <laughs> Maybe that's just me. This is the hand that cracked the nut that went in my mouth and never came out. This is the hand that slid round the bath to find the soap that wouldn't float. And I looked for it there, and it wasn't there. And then when I looked round the back, it was, whoa! How'd you get there? This is the hand on the hot water bottle. Ah, he, 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 he. Meant to warm my bed. Meant to warm my bed but got lost instead. So this is the hand that held the bottle, let go of the soap, that cracked the nut, that touched the frost. This is the hand that never got lost. This is the hand that never got lost. This is the hand that never got lost. Yeah, there it is, still on the end of your arm. Look, see it there. You lost the feeling in your tongue. You lost that nut. You lost the soap. You lost the hot water bottle, but you still got your... All right, we'll do that again, but this time we're going to say it straight through, all the way through, Mark, okay? So here we go. One, two, three. This is the hand that touched the frost that froze my tongue and made it go numb. This is the hand that cracked the nut that went in my mouth and never came out. This is the hand that slid round the bath to find the soap that wouldn't float. This is the hand on the hot water bottle. Ah, he meant to warm my bed, but got lost instead. So this is the hand that held the bottle, let go of the, that cracked the, that touched the, this is the hand that, this is the hand that, this is the hand that, hooray! I was out with some boys and girls by the River Thames in London, and the River Thames snaking along there by the Festival Hall. I'd been doing a workshop with some boys and girls where we'd been making up poems. The London Eye was talking to the River Thames. The River Thames was talking to the London Eye. The London Eye was jealous of the River Thames. I'm trying to do that at the same time. It's actually quite difficult. The, right, the, 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 blah, blah. The, the London Eye was talking to the River Thames saying how it's all right for you. you. You're going all the way to the sea. And the River Thames was looking up at the London Eye saying, well, it's nice for you. You can see out all over London. And we wrote these poems. And then when we had finished, I was walking off down by the side of the River Thames. And we got to Hungerford Bridge. Hungerford Bridge is a railway bridge. It's a railway bridge. Just only trains go over it. And there were about 30 children who had come away. And they were with their teachers and parents. And we got underneath the railway bridge. And some of you will know that there's a law, a kind of rule of nature, that if 30 children are underneath a railway bridge and a train goes over, all the children immediately go, ah! Where's that written down? Is it in the Bible? I don't, maybe I missed it. I had a very good Bible education at school, but I, I don't remember that bit. Underneath railway bridges go, ah! No, I don't remember that bit. Anyway, there we were under the railway, ah! Under the railway bridge, and everyone was going, ah! There, and, uh, I thought, I, you see, I have two people in my head, two people called teachers. I don't know whether any of you young people have ever heard of them. Have you heard of that? A teacher? No, there's a girl over there going, no, no. So are you a teacher, Mark? No, just checking. And yeah, so, uh, so these two, one of them's my mum and the other one's my dad. Just think about that. Both your parents boys and girls, are teachers. 
you're all day at school and you come home and you know some of you boys and girls where your mum and dad are not teachers mum or dad says to you how did you get on in school today and you start talking you say well you know at playtime we and your mum's going all right that's nice yeah that's right and you go yeah no it was really good we did some history and your dad's going right you know we need to do the garden a bit later yeah but my mum and dad it wasn't like that they used to say and what did you do in school today and they meant it what did you do in school today? I don't know. Stuff. What stuff? I don't know. It's just stuff stuff. What sort of stuff? I don't know. History stuff. That's interesting. Well, actually, it wasn't. No, what was it? What was the history? I don't know. There was some old stuff. Yes, yes. And that used to go on for about four hours at bedtime. What else did you do in school today? I don't know, I want to go to sleep now. Middle of the night. <laughs> what are you doing in school tomorrow? I don't know, I don't know, I'm going to school. Exactly, and what's going to happen? I don't know, I don't know. In the morning, you're getting ready to go to school. What's going to happen now? I'm going to school, yeah, that's right. Yes, so are we. Vroom, yeah. <laughs> so these two little teacher people inside my head, while the children, they're still there, by the way, under the bridge. Ah! And a little, these teacher people said something to me in my head. Yes, I have voices in my head. The two little teacher people said, now, Michael, instead of just letting them scream, think of something else they could do. So I did. I said, you know what, boys and girls, if you put your hands over here and you put them on the bridge, you can feel the train. See, and hear the train. See, hear the train, but also feel the train. So we all went over, all 30 of us, and the parents, and the teachers, and the assistant teachers, it's about 60 of us now, and we're all standing there with our hands on the bridge, waiting for the train. And the train came and we felt it. Diggity doo, doo. In fact, you could join in. Here we go. Diggity doo, diggity doo. Do trains go diggity doo? I've no idea. Diggity doo, diggity doo. Yeah! And I could feel the rhythm of the train. And then when I did that, boys and girls, something happened. Something happened. You may hear from all sorts of nice people that poems start from something called inspiration, inspiration. But they also start from just hearing stuff. Have you ever seen a crow? And have you noticed crows pop about eating anything? Any old dirt, any old rubbish, middle of the road, you don't want to even ask what they're eating out there. Wah, wah. And then if you go, a crow will go, because they hear it. And they go, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I could go and get a bit of that. And then they go over there, and something, a dog's left it. No, anyway, never mind. Oh, oh. Anything. That's what poets are like. We're crows. We go about scavenging, finding stuff, and sometimes just the stuff that we've just said. Weird. I'm standing, still standing there, by the way. It's gone up to 65 now because of another school's turned up. So we're all standing there, okay, and I just said, if you put your hands on the bridge, you can feel the rhythm of the train. And I thought, hands on the bridge feel the rhythm of the train. Hands on the bridge feel the rhythm of the train. I could begin a poem like that, and it would be one of those poems that sound like the thing you're saying. Hands on the bridge feel the rhythm of the train. It could be a rhythm poem, Hands on the bridge, and then I suddenly thought of something else. Something that Benjamin Zephaniah said to me. He once told me he makes up his poems in his head when he goes jogging. And then when he gets to the end of the jog, he knows the poem off by heart. And more than that, when he stands in front of people and he does the poem, somehow or other, magic, people seem to know the poem. So here it comes. The Benjamin Zephaniah Challenge. I'm going to do the poem and you're going to do it back to me. That's what he said. He said people will be able to do it. <laughs> Here we go. Hand on the bridge, feel the rhythm of the train. Hand on the window, feel the rhythm of the rain. Hand on your throat, feel the rhythm of your talk. 
Hand on your leg, feel the rhythm of your walk. Hand in the sea, feel the rhythm of the tide. Hand on your heart, feel the rhythm inside. Hand on the rhythm, feel the rhythm of the rhyme. Hand on your life, feel the rhythm of time. What? Hand on your life, feel the rhythm of time again. Hand on your life, feel the rhythm of time. So, you'll be able to do that. All we do is I <laughs> count you in, and then you'll be able to do it. I will help you. There'll be little cues. That's not spelt with a Q, by the way, some of you young ones. So you're going to help me do it. Are you going to help me do it down there on the front row, doing a nice stretch there? Last time I stretched like that was about 40 years ago. Isn't it amazing? Children just go, dun, and I go, no, sorry, maybe keep the trousers on. Right, OK. <laughs> Hand on the bridge, feel the rhythm of the train. I'll go one, two, three, four. A musician once told me that's what you do sometimes. One, two, three, four. Hand on the bridge, feel the rhythm of the track. Window. Hand on the window, feel the rhythm of the rack. Throat. Hands on your throat, feel the rhythm of your talk. Leg. Hands on your leg, feel the rhythm of your walk. Sea. Hands in the sea, feel the rhythm of the tide. Hand on your heart, feel the rhythm inside. Rhythm. Hands on the rhythm, feel the rhythm of the rhyme. Hands on your life, feel the rhythm of time. What? Hands on your life, feel the rhythm of time. Again, hands on your life, feel the rhythm of time. Whee! I think Benjamin was right. I think Benjamin did very well. I must tell him. I'll tell him, Benjamin, you were right. Now then, I, sometimes I come places uh, and I come to schools, and it's lovely, I go in, and then maybe I'm walking down the corridor in your school, and a boy or a girl who's about that size, they look at me in the corridor and they go, you're so old. <laughs> they do, quite often, it happens to me these days. It didn't used to happen to me a long time. No, it wouldn't have done, would it, a long time ago, because I wasn't, no, sorry, just clearing that up. So they go, you're so old. No, I mean, you're really old. Michael Rosen, because that's what all boys and girls call me, Michael Rosen, even one of my kids once called me that, you know. <laughs> no, no, one of my kids once said, hey, Dad, can you do a Michael Rosen poem? <laughs> I made the mistake of saying, isn't it a dad poem? No. <laughs> so there's Michael Rosen and there's Dad. They're two different people. Possibly true. So anyway, so... <clears throat> People say to me in schools quite often, they get up close and look at the wrinkles and they ask me to squeeze them up. <laughs> yeah, you're so old. And I have to explain, there is a reason. It's because I, I was born in the Stone Age. <laughs> no, this is true. Uh, I know there was a very, very nice man, very, very special man called Michael Gove. <laughs> and, sorry, no need for that. No need for that, very special man, and he said all schools should have a special timeline on their walls so that everybody knows that once upon a time there were old times and once then there were later times. So that work of genius, um, <laughs> and so if you boys and girls, I think you discover this in year three, you've got this timeline, and you'll notice that it all begins in the... Stone Age. I've no idea whether that's true or not. Probably isn't, but never mind. That won't worry Mr. Gove. But so there we are. So look, there, there's that bit there at the beginning, the Stone Age. And sometimes there's like a pile of stones. Don't get that wrong. It's not a pile of anything else. So it's a pile, <laughs> a pile of stones because that's all we had, boys and girls. In the Stone Age, all we had was stones, rocks, pebbles, gravel, cliffs. That's like all we had. You know, at home, we didn't have chairs. No, no, we just sat on a rock. Mum, it's really hard, Mum. My bum hurts, shush. She'd say, shush, it's not the chair age yet. <laughs> How did she know? A table, so didn't have a table, great big rock, boys and girls, great big rock. Can you imagine that? Sitting on a rock, great big rock. No telly, no te No telly? How did we live? All we had was a great big rock in the corner of the room. We used to watch the rock. What are you doing? Watching the rock. 
all night, every night. <laughs> That's all we did. It's terrible. And then you're having your supper, it was just pebbles and stones and say, ah, no, nah, it really hurts. Shush, eat your gravel. <laughs> Come on, mum, yeah, eat your gravel. Ah, it really hurts, it really hurts. Then you go off to school, it was exactly the same. You sat on a rock, you had a big rock in front of you, window down the side of the class, it had no glass in, because it wasn't the glass age yet. You've been sitting there and the wind is piling in. <laughs> Can you do this? <laughs> Miss, miss, it's really windy. Shush, that's why it's called a window. She'd say, take out your rock, write on your rock. We couldn't really, we didn't speak in the Stone Age. Like that, you go home, just the same, went to bed, great big rock. Mom! Really hurts all down my side. Shush, it's not the bed age yet. And mum was a teacher, you know. And then, boys and girls, the Stone Age came to an end. Look at that timeline. It's up in your school. Mr. Gove made sure of that. It's up in your school. And what it says is Stone Age. And then there's a line. And then the next age, the, the, the tent age, the paper age, something like that. Anyway, there's a line. That's the way it was. We were walking about in the Stone Age, right, like this, and suddenly this big line came down. <laughs> Can you do that? One, two, three. <laughs> One more time, because it's good fun. <laughs> I went, wow. I turned to my friend Brian. I said, Brian, what's that? He said, that's the end of the Stone Age, Mick. I said, wow, what do we do now? He said, you walk through the line into the next age. Wow, do we? And that's what we did. Honestly, boys and girls, we walked through the line like that. And we were in the next stage. It was amazing. I went to school, right? But they'd taken away the Stone Age teacher. And now we had a really, really, really strict teacher. She was so strict, this new teacher, you weren't allowed to breathe in her lessons. That is true. Miss, this new miss used to stand out the front and say, no breathing. Can you imagine that? Used to come in in the morning, she'd say, no breathing, and you had to take in a big breath. Are you ready? Here we go. And you've got to hold that all the way from the time you get to school till morning play. Hold it all the time. The weak ones just used to fall down at the back of the class. You could hear them going down like this. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. And there was always a whingy kid going, me, can we go out and do some breathing? And she'd say, no, you've got all playtime to do it in. And they'd go, oh, go on, miss, oh, go on, go on, little whingy bit. Oh, go on, go on, miss, no. At the beginning of the week, boys and girls, there were 48 children in my class, because we were part of what's called the bulge. <laughs> anyway, never mind. So 48 children. At the end of the week, there was only five of us left. <laughs> At the end of the day, you'd be stepping over children just to get out the room. Oh, no. There's Melanie. <laughs> it's a shame. She's really nice. Used to like Melanie. It's a shame. She <laughs> yeah. There's Dave. <laughs> Hard luck, Dave. <laughs> Always knew you were a bit weak, Dave. That wasn't very nice of me. That was very bad. I shouldn't have said that. Always knew you were a bit weak. Anyway, people say to me, Michael Rosen, or Michael Rosen, that can't be true. What you're saying can't be true because if it was true, you wouldn't be here now, here now at Hay Festival. To tell, the, to tell that story. It can't be true. And I say, ah, yes. But, boys and girls, when I was a boy, at the end of the Stone Age, they took out the rocks and they brought in desks with lids. Can you do that? Draw the desk. Desks with lids. And some of us figured it out. You could snatch a quick breath underneath the desk lid. 
and Miss wouldn't do anything, wouldn't know anything at all about it. Just practice with me, okay? Sit there, you're holding your breath. Check nobody's looking. Good. Okay, so from the beginning, we know how it goes, don't we? Miss says, no breathing. Good work, Mark. <laughs> the weak ones with me. Kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. The whiny kid. Me, could I go and do some breathing? No, you've got all playtime to do it in. Extra whingy bit. Oh, go on, me. Not too loud, it's just like you want some more birthday cake. Oh, go on, me. Go on. No. The other lot with their, well, all of us, in fact, with the desk lids. Are you ready? Hold that breath. <gasps> Check, nobody's looking. <laughs> Boom. No! Don't slam the desk lid down. If you slam the desk lid down, that meant out. School prison. There was a school prison underneath the school hall where they used to string us up from the wall bars. <laughs> Miss? Been up here for three weeks. And there's rats. And they're nibbling my toenails, miss. So, boys and girls, I figured out that if I wanted to survive, that means live, if I wanted to survive, then the way to do it, the way to do it was to let that desk lid down very, very, very slowly, quietly, once more from the beginning. We all know how it goes now. Miss says, no, breathe. Do the breath, here we go. The weak ones, kaboom, kaboom, kaboom. The whiny kid, me, could I go and do some breathing? No, you've got all playtime to do it in. Extra windy bit, not too loud. Oh, go on, me, go on. No, the other lot with their desk lids hold that breath. Make sure nobody's looking. Boom, out, school prison. <laughs> me, been up here for. And there's, and they're nibbling mine. Me, thumbs around the edge of that desk lid, hold that breath. Make sure nobody's looking. And then let it down really slowly, quietly, slowly, quietly, slowly, quietly. And that was the way to, that was the way to, that was the way to. And that's why I'm here today. Thank you. Yes, thank you. And then, boys and girls, the great thing was, it was the end of the Stone Age, and that meant we got a telly! Hooray! They took out the stone, the great big rock telly, they took it out, and two blokes arrived. Two guys arrived with a telly. <laughs> to me, to me, come on in. All right. Ooh, ooh, ooh. They're always very old, those blokes, aren't they? And you're thinking, one of them could just, never mind. <laughs> Right, careful, Jack, when you let it down, get your fingers out from underneath because you could easily squash your fingers. Uh, uh, will he ever get up? Uh, uh, pff, oh. And it was this big. It was like a wardrobe. Can you draw that, boys and girls? Can you draw that? And the screen, but the screen was this big. <laughs> it, was, it was as big as a sandwich. And it wasn't in colour. It was in... No, they hadn't invented black and white yet. It was grey and grey. <laughs> yeah. And when you looked at it, all you could see were like grey smudges. So I tell you what, let's draw the telly. Here we go. Wardrobe, sandwich, smudges. And I had a favourite programme. My favourite programme was The Lone Ranger. And The Lone Ranger was a cowboy, cowboy kind of series. And it always began in the same way. Cue music. Then the voice says, The Lone Ranger. Light grey smudge goes across the screen. That was the horse. And the voice said, with a muddy cry of, Hi ho, silver! And then on came the Lone Ranger. And he had a mask. Can you do that? 
And then he did lots of good deeds. Do a good deed over there. Do another good deed over there. And then he went off. And two people were left on the screen. And one of them said, who was that man? And the other person said, that was the Lone Ranger. Cue music. Right, we're going to do it from the beginning. The two guys bring in the telly. Yeah, no, you're not going to the toilet. Yeah, you bring in the telly. And it's how big? It's big as a wardrobe. How big's the screen? Sandwich. Grey smudges. Cue music. The voice says the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger. Light grey smudge goes across the screen. The voice now says with a mighty cry of, hey ho, silver. Enter the Lone Ranger. Get your mask on. Do lots of good deeds. Good deeds. Good deeds. Good deeds. And then go. And two people are left on stage. And one of them says, well, go do the look. You ready? One, two, three. Who was that man? The other person does the look. That was the... Cue music. Yes! Great! Clap yourselves! Hooray! Oh, that's what it was like at the end of the Stone Age. It was wonderful. And when I think about these things, it takes me all the way back to when I was a little kiddie. Uh, maybe before that. I mean, how many of you here, for example, can remember the day you were born? Anyone here, can you remember? <laughs> Lovely. You two there. That's nice. Anyone else? It's an old bloke over there. Yeah, lovely, good. Yeah, you can, that's nice, that's right. Mark, can you? No, he can't, no. Yeah, so, yeah. Now, the day you were born, you know, was amazing. No, it really was. You were born and people rushed into the room, about 400 people. And they all came rushing into the room, doctors, nurses, parents, aunties, cousins, uncles. they all came piling in. Look, it's a baby! That was you. It was you. And then they picked you up. They'd always do this. They picked you up and went, you're so lovely! <laughs> Can you imagine that? You've just arrived and these great big faces come looming up to you going, you're so lovely! <laughs> right there, right in your face. And you're going, what? If you see a newborn baby, they're going, what? What's going on? They're trying to figure it out, you see, and they're, uh, huh? What's going on? And people say, you're so lovely! And I, d I don't want to say anything horrid now, but when babies are born, sometimes their faces, how can I put it? They're a little bit scrunched up. <laughs> can you do that? This is what you look like when you were born. Just practice this. You're so lovely! Maybe. So there we are. And then people inspect you. People love inspecting you. They get out microscopes, telescopes, binoculars, throw you up in the air. Uh, oh, um, close one. Uh, all that sort of stuff. And they inspect you. And, they ca and the days go by. The months go by. The years go by. Whatever you do, you know, you might blink like that. And they go, she blinked! <laughs> you may have lifted your head up. You may have been lying in your cot and went, uh. And they went, no! And the 400 people all came rushing in. What's happened? She lifted her head up. And then they all lean over going, do it again. <laughs> and you're lying there like this. And all these faces coming in over the top going, do it again. And you're lying there and went, yeah, all right, OK. Uh, hey! <laughs> then the days go by, the weeks, the months. Now, I don't want to say anything bad here, boys and girls. But maybe, just maybe, if you're anything like me, when I was, came home from school and I'd walk in and I'd go, <laughs> I'd just drop my bag like that. Because I thought the bag fairy would pick it up. <laughs> I'm a little bag fairy picking up the bag. <laughs> you drop the bag, you sit down in the sofa, oh! 
I'm so tired. <laughs> I've been in school all day. And then you look around for the switcher. It's always under your bum, isn't it, the switcher? Found the switcher. Peppa Pig. It's always Peppa Pig, isn't it? It's been Peppa Pig on the telly for about, about 183 years. Peppa Pig. And your mum or your dad or whoever looks after you, they don't go, wow, did you see the way he switched the switcher? Do it again. Well, well with the switcher, you mean, yeah, all right, okay. Peppa Pig. Wah! No, it's not like, boys and girls, I figured this out when I was your age, that my mum and dad had studied me, and then when I got to about the sort of bag-dropping age, they'd stopped studying me. So I decided to study them. <laughs> can you do that, boys and girls? Get your binoculars out. You can turn to your parent and study them. <laughs> Grandparents. And the first thing I found out, boys and girls, was truly shocking. I found out that my dad doesn't know everything. <laughs> no, because when I was a little boy, boys and girls, I thought that my dad did know everything. I really did. You know, a bus would go past, and I'd say, Dad, what's that? And my dad would say, son, that's a bus. <laughs> and I thought, wow, my dad knows. Hang on a minute, dad, you said that's a bus. There's some round things on the bottom. And they're going round as the bus is going along. What are they? Yeah, I know, but you weren't there. <laughs> it was just me and my dad on the street in Pinner. Pinner. What are they, Dad? My dad said, son, those are wheels. And I thought, you know what I thought, <gasps> wow, my dad knows everything. Hang on a minute, Dad, you said those things are wheels, but how many are there? It was quite a small bus. How many are there? My dad said, son, there are, there are. And I thought, you know what I thought, wow, my dad knows but then came a terrible terrible day when i found out that my dad does not know everything how did i find out watch closely watch us watch my dad and watch how we find out that my dad does not know everything we sit down to eat and the potatoes a bit hot so I only put a little bit on my fork and I blow till it's cool, just cool, into the mouth, nice. And there's my brother, he's doing the same and you can join in please, here we go. Till it's cool, just cool, into the mouth, nice. And there's my mum, she's doing the same. Yes, I did come from that sort of a home, Mark. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Till it's cool, just cool. Into the mouth. <laughs> nice. But my dad. My dad, what does he do? He stuffs a great big chunk of potato straight into his mouth, and that really does it. His eyes pop out. He blows, he puffs, he yells, he bobs his head up and down. He even spits bits of potato onto the plate. You can join in with this bit, it's quite good fun. Here we go. <coughs> and he turns to us and he goes, watch out everybody, the potato's really hot. <laughs> Did we know the potato was hot? Did I know the potato was hot? Did my brother know the potato was hot? Did my mum know the potato was hot? Yes. Did my dad know the potato was hot? No. That was the day I found out that my dad does. Not know everything. Exactly. Very good. Clap yourselves. You joined him beautifully for that. <laughs> truly, truly, truly shocking moment that was. Yes. Um, so, when I was a boy, another thing that happened to me was that I had a favorite treat. 
some of you seem to know about my favourite treat. I, I thought it was a little private thing that I kept all to myself. I had a favourite, favourite, favourite treat, and it was when my mum made spaghetti bolognese. So, mum, <laughs> have I got that wrong? I'll try again. When I was a boy, I had a favourite, favourite, favourite treat, and it was when my mum made Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> little cultural reference there. Did you see that, guys? Yeah, we love the Wiener Schnitzel. You take the... No, mustn't mention veal. No, no, it, it was something else. Plastic. Okay, no, not even plastic. Right, forget Wiener Schnitzel, just that they haven't happened. Right, so once, when I, when I was a boy, I had a favourite, favourite treat, and it was when my mum made... Yes, I loved chocolate cake. <laughs> my mum, she says to me, listen, Michael, she didn't call me Michael Rosen, actually. She said, listen, Michael, if it, she actually called me some other things. My mum used to call me Schmerl. That's a Yiddish word. Some Jewish people uh, speak Yiddish, and it means little fool. <laughs> All the time when I was growing up, my mum would say, come on, Schmerl, like that. And I thought, little nice boy. It means little fool. I looked it up. Thanks, Mum. And the other thing she used to call me, she used to kiss me goodnight and say, Good night, Muzik. And I'd say, What's a Muzik? And she said, Well, it's like a little Russian chap. I looked it up. It means a little Russian peasant. <laughs> but it's all right because President Putin used the word. Last week, I looked it up and it said, A good chap. Good night, Muzik. Thanks, Mum. Thanks. That's all right. All is forgiven. On the other hand, when I went out the house, she'd say, Michael, you can't go out. You look like a schloch. <laughs> What's a schloch? I don't know. You look like a schloch. You don't want to go about looking like a schloch. No, no, I don't. What's a schloch, though? Never mind. You don't want to look like a schloch. <laughs> I never found out what a schloch is. What was it? Some sort of, like, gruffalo thing? <laughs> You don't want to go out looking like the schlock gruffalo? Ugh. Where was I? Chocolate cake. I had a favourite treat. My favourite treat was chocolate cake. My mum, she says to me, listen, Michael, if there's any chocolate cake left over at the end of the day, you can take some to school tomorrow to have at playtime or at lunchtime. So I used to go to school with some chocolate cake in a little kind of box thing like that, and I'll be going to school, and I know it's in there, yeah, it's in there. Oh, it's so exciting, yeah, it's in there. I'd get to school, it would be playtime or lunchtime, and I'd put it down, I'd go, open the box. <laughs> open it up. <clears throat> and I just get it out, and you're gonna peel it off as you little sticky stuff, oh, a bit dribbly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna just oh, yeah, just gonna have some of that. Yeah, oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, ah, hang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mm, mm, mm. And one time there was some chocolate cake left over at the end of the day, and I went to bed. And I was fast asleep, fast asleep, fast asleep. But then in the middle of the night, I woke up and I thought, chocolate cake. <laughs> Maybe I could go downstairs and have a little look at it. I'm not going to eat any. I'm just going to have a little look at it. So really quiet, out of the bed. Shh. Mustn't wake my brother up. He's about to tell on me. Out the room really quiet, shh, really quietly. Careful of the creaky floorboard outside mum and dad's room, because if I tread on that, it makes a noise and it wakes them up, I'll be in big trouble. Really careful now, really careful. I know where it is, okay. <coughs> Did they hear? No, it's okay. Did they wake up? It's okay. <coughs> it's okay. On down the passage, down into the kitchen, over to the cupboard. Yeah! No, shh. Just going to take it down, have a little look at it. Not going to eat any. <laughs> look at that! 
and I noticed some little crumbs on the plate. So I think if I lick my finger, I could pick up some of those crumbs and no one would know anything at all about it. Can you do that? Yeah. Oh, look, sitting on the end of my finger. I'm so lucky. Mm. And then I noticed some little crumbly, sticky bits on the side of the cake, so I think if I take a knife, I could just tidy it up a little bit. <laughs> no one would know, so I take the knife and... And then I just scoop it together like that. Oh, there's all the sticky bits! I love it! Oh, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. And as I've tidied it up a little bit over here, I'm thinking, well, maybe I could just even it up a bit over here. So I take the knife through the crispy icing on the top, through the squashy icing in the middle, whole slice this time. And then I've got, yeah, look at it, whole slice. It's all going to go right in there. No, no. Mmm. Mm. And now I've got the taste of chocolate cake in my mouth. I can't stop myself and I take the knife and I go... Oh no! It's all gone. Oh no, they're bound to notice now. A whole chocolate cake doesn't just disappear. What am I going to do? Oh, no. Oh, I know. I'll wash up the plate and the knife and I'll put them away and they won't know anything at all about it. Good thinking. Take the plate and the knife. Psh, on the drain down, the knife. Psh, careful health and safety. Psh, like that. Yeah, look for the cloth. Yeah, dry it up. Into the cupboard. Yeah, and the knife. Really careful health and safety. In the drawer. All clear. Back up to bed. Really quiet. Shh. Up to bed. Up the stairs. Along the passage. Really quiet. I know where the creaky floorboard is. So all I've got to do is step over it. Because if I tread on it and it makes a noise, mum and dad here, I am dead. <laughs> Did they hear? No. Did they wake up? All clear. Ah. Into the bedroom, into bed, under the covers. Where have I heard that before? <laughs> under the nice, warm feeling, chocolate cake in my belly, goody, 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 and go to sleep. In the morning, I get up, I go downstairs, and I'm having my breakfast. I'm having my breakfast, and my mum, she's really busy. She's busy over here. She's busy over there. I'm having my breakfast, and mum says, oh, don't forget your book folder. She hands me my book folder. I carry on having my breakfast. She's busy over here. She's busy over there. I'm having my breakfast, and mum says, oh, yes. And there's something else nice. There's some chocolate cake left over from yesterday. And I went, um... No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and she says, what's the matter? Usually, you usually jump at the idea of having chocolate cake. And I went, no, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> and she's looking at me very closely. Just here. <laughs> she leans in. She looks at her. She says, what's that? And I said, what's what? She said, that's not chocolate cake, is it? And I went, hmm. And then she went over to the cupboard. It's gone. The chocolate cake's gone. You haven't eaten the whole of the rest of the chocolate cake, have you? Have you? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? You don't know. You're standing there in the middle of the room and you're saying you don't know. You must know. You must, you must know whether you've eaten it. I don't believe you. Listen, that's the last time you ever have chocolate cake to take to school. Now, off you go to school. No, before you go to school, go upstairs to the bathroom and wash your dirty, sticky face. I went upstairs to the bathroom and I looked in the mirror and I could say, yeah, there it is. Yeah, I could just see it at the corner of my mouth. 
the chocolate smudge, the chocolate blob, and I looked at it and I thought, maybe next time we have chocolate cake, she'll forget about it. Do you think she will? How many of you here got a mum who'll forget about it? How many of you here got a mum who'll remember and remember forever and ever? Mark's mum. I can tell you, boys and girls, my mum was brilliant at forgetting. If I did a bad thing, forget about it. My dad, he remembered everything. He remembered absolutely everything. My mum forgot and any bad thing you did, forget about it. And that's why, boys and girls, I can tell you today, I'm what's known as a spoilt brat. <laughs> now then, I think we have time for some questions. So there are some people coming around with microphones. They can choose you. So uh, if there we are, there goes a nice man in a high-vis jacket. He's found somebody. And then if you call out to me your question. How much, what? Bu how much books have you made? Um, sometimes I write books and sometimes I write bits and other people do lots and lots of pictures. Sometimes I collect together other things that people write. And if you put all those together, it is over 200. But some of the books are only about two words long. <laughs> so when you're in school and your teacher says, could you write a book now? Just write two words and say, finished. And then when they say, well, could you write a little bit more? You go, no, Michael Rosen say, Michael Rosen, he says you can write a two word book. So, you put, so what you do is you put the title there, my very long book. Then you open it up and then maybe it's, it's about uh, my dog. So that's the title, my dog. And then you open it up and then there's a picture of a dog. And then over here you write dog. <laughs> and then you turn it over and the dog's got his mouth open. And you write woof. <laughs> and then you turn it over, there's a little blank page there. You can write on there, published by me. Not me, you. Right, and then you have another blank page, and then on the back you write, a great book <laughs> by me. And there you are, there's your book. I just made that up all by myself. I did, seriously, I just, I've never made up that book before. Dog, woof. I think there's some people from Walker Books here. Um, <laughs> could you copyright, wait, copyright that? Could you, could you do that? Rosie, Rosie's here. Rosie, are you here? No, she's gone. She got fed up. Yeah, I've uh, never seen that before. So there we are. Lovely. We've got another question. What's your best advice? Oh, a best advice for anything? Poem. For what? For, for a poem. <laughs> best advice for a poem. Well, poems can start anywhere. So they can just start with a word. And sometimes poems are great. A good way to start a poem is you come up with a word or two or three words and just repeat it. So we've already got two, dog, woof. So we could say it again, dog, woof. So we've now got dog, woof, dog, woof. Let's have it a third time. Dog, woof, dog, woof, dog, woof. That sounds like a chorus. Then you, maybe you've got a dog and your dog's called Sam. Here comes Sam. Dog, woof, dog, woof. You, excuse me. Could you make an effort? Mark, Mark knows. Here we go. Here comes Sam. Dog, woof, dog, woof, dog, woof. What's Sam doing? Dog, woof, dog, woof, dog, woof. Sam's hungry. Dog, woof, dog, woof. We're making a poem. So all you need to do to get a poem going is to repeat things. Repeat means to say again, yes? That's one way to make a poem. And it's quite a good way. You can start with your own name or your nickname. So I could say, my mum calls me Schmeril. My mum calls me Schmeril, 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 Schmeril. And then I could make up a little poem about my mum, and that would be the chorus, Schmeril, 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 Schmeril. But sometimes she calls me Muzik. Muzik, Muzik, Muzik. 
Mujik, Mujik, Mujik. Though once she said, you don't want to go out looking like a schloch. What's a schloch? I don't know. You just don't want to go out looking like one. Schloch, 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 schloch. We got a poem. <laughs> Let's have another question. Why didn't you make another chocolate cake so you wouldn't notice? <laughs> That's very, very good. There's one tiny little problem. I didn't know how to make chocolate cakes. I didn't know how. It just seemed like magic when my mum made chocolate cake. So she'd make it in a bowl, she'd stir it all up, she'd then wipe round with a wooden spoon, she'd plonk it into a pan, and I would walk off with the bowl. Don't do that, the flour's not cooked, don't care. You'll get a bellyache, don't care. So all I knew was how to lick the bowl. I didn't know how to make, I would help her, I would break in the egg, stir in the stuff, but if you said to me exactly how much, I didn't know, I hadn't read the rest of it. And it was like that with a lot of the food my mum made, I never knew exactly how much. And my mum was like that. She once went to see my grandmother, and in grand we never said grandmother, you say the Yiddish word for grandmother, that's bubba. And so we went to see her mother and she said, mum, she called her mum, she said, mum, I'm going to make some pickled cucumbers. How much vinegar and how much salt do you put in? And bubba said, to taste. <laughs> and mum said, yeah, but how much is that, mum? She said, I don't know, so it's nice to taste. And mum said, but I need to know how much. So you make it, you put it in and you taste it. And if it's right, it's right, it's nice. So that was mum's recipe for pickled cucumber. To taste. If you look at, you could, I don't know, it could be quite interesting, a Jewish cookbook. And instead of having, you know, three ounces, six ounces, 45 grams, it just says to taste. So it's nice. Make it so it's nice. And every page you turn over, you know, you make latkes. How do you make latkes? So they're nice, you know, that's it. You fry them in how much oil? So it's nice, so it's hot, make it nice. Eat them fresh, that's when it's nice. Amazing cookbook, be called, so it's nice. <laughs> Michael Rosen's cookbook, so it's nice. Is Walker Books still here, are they still? <laughs> okay, we've got time for one more question, my little darlings, one more question. Yes. What was the first book you wrote? Mind Your Own Business. <laughs> that was what it was called. I wait for days and days for someone to say, what was your first book called? Hooray! I didn't want to be rude, but that's what I called it. I called it, it was a terrible thing to call a book. When the book came out, I found out there were people going to my local library. They were going in saying, excuse me, <laughs> can we have a book please? Yes dear, what book would you like? Mind your own business. Don't you be so rude. No, it's not our fault. It's what Michael Rosen called it, wasn't it? Hmm. I'm not quite sure why they went, hmm. And then when I'd finished writing that book, someone said to me, are you writing another book? And I said, yes. And they said, what's that called? And I said, wouldn't you like to know? Because <laughs> that's what it was called, you see. I said, wouldn't you like to know? And they went, yeah, I would like to know, actually. So I said, wouldn't you like to know? And they said, yes, I would like to know. So I said, well, that's what it's called. And they went, Oh. People do that, don't they? Have you noticed? Oh. What does it mean? Could you open a book, a dictionary, and it says complexity, clock, platform. Oh. How would you spell that? Oh. When I'd finished writing that book, I got together with Roger McGough, a wonderful poet. We did a book together and somebody said, what's that called? And I said, you tell me because that's what that one was called, you see. I said, you tell me, and they went, oh, no, you tell me. <laughs> I said, you tell me, they went, no, you tell me. I said, that's what it's called, and they went, well, you know how they went, they went, ah! exactly, and another reason why I'm here today. Look, I've got to stop now. It's, we've only got 28, 27, 26. It's a lovely, great big clock here. I'm gonna nick that, I'm gonna have that. Every time I do an act, I could take that with me. The hay clock. Lovely. Thank you very much. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks.